Hello everyone. In this video, we'll create ASP.NET Core MVC app using PostgreSQL database. Before we start coding, let's quickly talk about what is PostgreSQL. In nutshell, PostgreSQL is a powerful, open source object relational database system. It's known for its reliability, robust feature set, and strong compliance with SQL standards. Now question comes, why should we use it? Answer is, while SQL Server is a great and common choice, Postgres offers some compelling advantages. It runs on all major platforms, making deployment and scaling flexible and often more cost-effective. It's incredibly feature-rich, with excellent support for advanced data types like JSON, which is perfect for modern web applications. The ecosystem and community around it are massive, and when you combine its performance and stability with the versatility of ASP.NET Core, you get a truly powerful, cross-platform, and enterprise-ready stack for building any application, from a simple blog to a complex financial system. So, that's enough introduction of it. Before going further, make sure you have installed PostgreSQL along with PG Admin. Now, let's start coding without any further delay. So open Visual Studio. Create new project. Select ASP.NET Core MVC app. Enter project name. Leave everything as it is and click next. Now our project is ready. First we need to import some required packages. For that, open NuGet Package Manager. Here, search for npgsql.entityframeworkcore.postgresql and install this package. Then search for Microsoft Entity Framework Core. Here install this design package. Then install this tool package. And that's all we need. Now we need to create models. For that, create a class named Book Inside Models folder. In it, create a ID property. Then create string type properties named Title and Author. Then create a decimal type price property. Then create a quantity property. Now give required annotation along with custom error message to all properties except ID property. And finally, give key annotation to ID property to make it primary key. Now we need to create application DB context class. For that, create a data folder. In it, create this context class. Inherit this class from DB context class, which comes from Entity Framework Core. Then create constructor of this class along with options parameter. Then create a DB set property of book model type named books. This will create our books table. Now we need to add connection string. For that, open app settings file. Here, create a connection string property and inside it, create default connection property. In it, set server to localhost port to 5432. This is port number which you have set while installing the PostgreSQL. By default, it's 5432. Next, set database name, then set user ID to Postgres, and then set password. Again, this is the password which you have set while installing PostgreSQL. Now, we need to register all of this in program file. For that, open program.cs file. Here, use builder.services.addbcontext method and set its type by passing application db context class to it, and also pass option parameter to it using lambda expression, and then use options that use npg sql method, and pass builder.configuration.getConnection string method to it, and pass name of the connection string to it. With this, our setup is complete. Now open package manager console to add migrations. Here, Enter add migration command along with migration's name. Once migrations are ready, enter update database command. Now open PG admin to see whether our database is created or not. Open server menu. And here we can see our bookstore demo database. Open it, go to schemas and open tables. Here we can see our books table. Now open it. And here we can see the columns of the table which matches exactly with our model class. With this, we're ready to perform CRUD operations on this database. Now we need to create index page. For that, create the books controller in controller folder. 
In it, create private read only application DB context type property named context. Then create constructor of this class and initialize this property in it. Then add HTTP get annotation over index method. Then make it async method. In it, create books variable and initialize it with context.books.toList async method. This method comes from entity framework core and returns the books in list format. Then return view method and pass books to it. Also change the return type to task. Now, create a folder named books in views folder. In it, create a view named index. Now open layout file. And add a new nav link. And change ASP controller to books and ASP action to index. And also change the title. Now open CSS file. Add background color to the body. Then target navbar.brand class and make its font bold and add font size to make it bigger. Then target table header element and set border top property to none. Then target BTN class under BTN group and give it margin of 5 pixels on right side. Then add BTN SM class and pass padding on vertical and horizontal side and change the font size. Now, go to index view. Here, Add model of I enumerable of book type. Then add code block and set page title using view data. Then add a block and add D flex, justify content between a line item center and MB4 classes to it. Then add H1 tag and set heading. Then add an anchor tag and set ASP action to create and pass BTN and BTN success classes to it. Then add I tag to display bootstrap icon and pass by and by plus LG classes to it and then pass title to anchor tag. Then create another block and pass table responsive class to it. Then create table and pass table, table stripped and table hover classes to it. Then add T head and pass table dark class to it. Then add TR tag in it, add TH tag and in it use HTML dot display name for method and pass title to it using lambda expression. Then duplicate this line four time to display, author, price, and quantity. Then add another th tag and pass actions title to it. Then create tbody. In it, use for each loop to iterate over model. In it, add tr tag. In it, add td tag. And in it, use html dot display for method and pass title to it using lambda expression. Then duplicate this line to display author, price, and quantity. Then create another TD tag. In it, create a block and pass BTN group class to it and set role to group. In it, create anchor tag and set ASP action to details, ASP route ID to item.id and pass BTN, BTN info and BTN SM classes to it. In it, add I tag to add bootstrap icon and then set BTN title. Then duplicate this anchor tag two time. In second tag, set ASP action to edit, change BTN info class to warning, change the bootstrap icon, and also change the title. Then in last tag, set ASP action to delete, change BTN info class to danger, change bootstrap icon, and finally change the title. Now run the app to see the result. Open the books page. Here we can see the index page with table inside it. Right now, there is nothing inside the database, so the table is empty. With this, index page is complete. Now we'll add create page. So add HTTP get annotation here. Then add create method which returns view. Then create a view named create in books folder. In it, add book model. Then add code block and set page title using view data. Then create heading. Then create a block and pass row class to it. Then create another block and set the width of columns to 6. In it, create a form, set ASP action to create. In it, add html.antiforgery token method. Then create a block and set ASP validation summary to model only and pass this class to change text color. Then create a block and pass form group class to it and also pass some margin to bottom. Then create label and set ASP for to title, 
and pass control label class to it. Then create input and set ASP4 to title and pass form control class to it. Then create span tag and set ASP validation for to title and pass text danger class to it. Then copy this block and paste it three times. In second block, pass author property instead of title. Next, replace title with price property. Next, add quantity instead of title. Then create a block and pass form group class to it. In it, create a button, set type to submit, and pass btn and btn primary classes to it. Then pass i tag in it to display icon and then add title of this button. Then create anchor tag and set asp action to index and pass btn and btn secondary classes to it. Also create an i tag in it and pass title. And at the bottom, pass validation scripts partial to scripts section to add client side validation. Now go to controller. Here, add HTTP post annotation. Then add validate anti forgery token annotation. Then create an async method named create and pass book model as parameter. In it, create an if statement to check if model state is valid. In it, use context.books.add method and pass book to it. Then use context.save changes async method. Then return redirect to action method and pass index action name and books controller name to it. Then return view and pass book to it. Now run the app. Now open create page to add the book. If we try to submit empty form, it shows errors because we enabled the client side validation. Now add the credentials. And our book is displaying in the column. Now refresh the table and we can see the book. With this, create page is complete. Now we'll create edit page. So open books controller and add HTTP get annotation here. Then create an async method named edit and pass ID as parameter to it. In it, create book variable and initialize it with context.books.find async method and pass ID to it. Then create to if statement to check if book is null. In it, return not found method. Then return view and pass book to it. Then create view named edit in books folder. Then copy everything from create page and paste here in edit page. Then change page heading and title. Change forms action to edit. Change button title to save. Now open controller. Here, add HTTP post annotation and validate anti-forgery token annotation. Then create an async method named edit and pass book parameter of book model type to it. In it, use if statement and check if model state is valid. In it, use context.update method and pass book to it. Then use context.save changes async method. Then return redirect to action method to redirect to index page. Then return view and pass book to it. Now run the app. Now open edit page. Our book is loaded successfully. Now make some changes and save. And updated price is shown in the table. Now open database and refresh the table. And we can see the new price value in it. With this, edit page is complete. Now we'll create details page. So, open controller and add HTTP get annotation. Then create an async method named details and pass ID as parameter to it. In it, create a book variable and initialize it with context.books.find async method and pass ID to it. Then use if statement to check if book is null. In it, return not found method. Then return view and pass book to it. Then create a view named details in books folder. In it, add book model. Then create code block and set page title. Then create heading. Then create a block. In it, create a DL tag and pass row class to it. Then create DT tag and set columns width. In it, use HTML.display name for method and pass title to it using Lambda expression. Then create dd tag and set columns width. In it, use html.display for method and show title using lambda expression. Copy these two tags and paste three times. Then change title property to display author, 
price, and quantity properties. Then create a block and create an anchor tag in it and set ASP action to edit, ASP route ID to model.id and pass BTN and BTN warning classes to it. In it, use I tag to display icon and also set title. Then duplicate this line and set action to index. Remove this route parameter, change warning to secondary, also change icon and title. Now run the app. Now try to open the details page. And here we can see the details of the book. If we click on edit button, we'll be redirected to edit page. With this, details page is complete. Now we'll create delete page. So open books controller. Add HTTP get annotation here. Then create an async method named delete and pass ID as parameter to it. In it, create book variable and initialize with context.books.find async method and pass ID to it. Then use if statement to check if book is null and in it, return not found method. Then return view and pass book to it. Then create a view named delete in books folder. Now copy everything from edit page and paste here in delete page. Change page title and heading. Then add a subheading for confirmation message. Then remove this block and create form inside first block and set ASP action to delete. In it, add html.antiforgery token method. Then create input, set type to hidden and set ASP for to ID. Then create button and set type to submit and pass BTN and BTN danger classes to it. In it, create I tag to display icon and also set button title. Then create an anchor tag and set ASP action to index and pass BTN and BTN secondary classes to it. Then create I tag for icon and also set title. Now open controller. Here create HTTP post annotation and set action name to delete in it. Then add validate anti-forgery token annotation. Then create an async method named delete confirmed and pass ID parameter to it. Then create book variable and initialize it with context.books.find async method and pass ID to it. Then use if statement to check if book is null and return not found method in it. Then use context.books.remove method and pass boot to it. Then use context.save changes async method. And then return redirect to action method and pass index action and books controller name to it. Now run the app. Now create some new books. Now try to delete this book. Book is loaded in delete page. And book is not showing in the table which means book has been deleted successfully. Now, if we check it in the database by refreshing the table, we are not able to see that book, which means it's deleted. Now if we delete this book and refresh to table again, we cannot find that book too. With this, delete page is complete. Now, we have completed all CRUD operations on our PostgreSQL database and this video is almost complete. Now there's only one thing left which that our bootstrap icons are not showing. For that, open layout page and here, add bootstrap icons CDN. Now restart the app. And now, we are able to see our icons and buttons. With this, this tutorial is complete. I hope you like this video. If you have any question, feel free to ask. Finally, thanks for watching. See you in next video.